welcome my friends to this podcast about all kinds of woolly yarny things my name is Doug and I'm coming to you from Albuquerque in New Mexico welcome to all the new subscribers welcome to everybody who's been here for a long time and I haven't seen you in so long so I'm really happy to sit down here to chat with you about what's been going on in the past weeks one of the things that happened was I went to Winslow to the knitting retreat as I have been doing several times in the past and I did a little pop-up shop there and it was just I mean Winslow that place the La Posada Hotel is just a fabulous location it's so nice and they're so welcoming to all of us knitters and I met again a bunch of people that I have known from past years and I was delighted that um, Rebecca here from Albuquerque brought a shawl that she made with yarn that she purchased last year. It's the birds, uh, birds of a feather and I'm going to show you the pictures that we took uh, together with both our shawls. I love how hers turned out and uh, Hi, Rebecca, if you're watching this. Yes, um, that was Winslow. And then after Winslow, we headed on to Utah, my husband and I, for a vacation in Moab. We love Moab. We love Utah. And it was just very a great time of the year to go. Not a lot of people. We were lucky with the weather. And Moab is in this in this um a bowl kind of like surrounded by mountains so it's slightly warmer we were just I, f I feel like we were lucky with everything great weather not a lot of people there yet and um so we really enjoyed our week there we had a great place where we stayed and um and my husband thank him for that he's always driving so um he's I get to knit and he drives yeah and um but you're here for the knitting and so I'm going to tell you what I finished but also what I'm wearing this is a cardigan that I made many years ago and if you want to find me on on Ravelry to look up my projects where I usually I'm pretty good with photos and to link to patterns and to keep project notes but this is where you'll find the the uh, i am paper dag there and on instagram and this cardigan is called the bright arlon cardigan great pattern loved making it and i think that the fit is so wonderful and i've worn this a lot and it's an early um, Zia Wool's colorway and a base that's discontinued and I feel like last year I didn't wear this cardigan but this year I pulled it out and I thought why did I not wear it last year it's fantastic great sleeve length great fit a little bit longer in the back and of course you can make the sleeves whichever length you would like So that's what I'm wearing and I'm kind of I'm kind of like a little bit I, I want to try not to be not to tell you too, too much because this is all I have so many things that I brought to show you so we got to get going and I there's some things that you have seen in the past so for details you can go maybe to past episodes but um so this is not horrendously one of those horrendously long episodes one of the things that you may have seen many times in the past is this wonderful scarf which hallelujah is finally finished i can't believe it i was knitting on this what feels like forever i used a a German yarn that I bought at my their local yarn store and 5.5 ah, millimeter needles 100 stitches and really just stockinette 
And that's what took me so long. It was just... Okay, let's not sugarcoat it, but it was insanely boring. But now I love it. It's beautiful. I'm so glad I finished this baby and it got done on the trip and I took some lovely pictures with it somewhere in Utah that are, by the way, on my project page on Ravelry. Another thing, two, two other things that, I no, I got right here. I have, th I'm going to show you the three things that I mainly worked on on the trip. I mean, everybody needs a pair of socks and this is some, this is a crazy zubber ball, but the, the little bit heavier kind. And um, I had started this, these socks a good while ago and I thought, yes, I'm going to push these and um, hopefully get, get them done. Didn't happen. <laughs> so because, but I got other things done. I got other things done. But this one, yes, they're going to be pretty. And I, even though the yarn you could knit with three millimeter needles, I like a dense sock. Also, I find them better wearing when the fabric is not so loose. So I use, I'm using 2.5 millimeter needles for these beautiful vanilla socks with the heel flap. And that's the way I love my socks. Mindless knitting. And I took them in one of the bags that I have made. I love these. I call them naughty or nice. And this is the naughty and nice side, <laughs> of course. That's the pair of socks that I brought. Still on sock number one. And then I have also been working on the outline by Beata of Hedgehog Fibers. She has, of course, um, presented this um, on Ravelry with Hedgehog, Hedgehog yarns, which I love. And I, but I originally saw this. On my friend Nancy, local friend who wore it to a knitting retreat, it, not a retreat. Well, she was at the retreat. I don't know if she brought this. She was in Winslow also. But Nancy, I saw her at um, my friend's, uh, my friend Lauren's knit night and I fell in love immediately. Nancy made hers also with hand spun yarns and I think she used leftovers, I think so. And that's what I'm doing too. I'm using all the little bits that I could find in a fingering and light fingering weight. And I, whenever I'm in the right mood, I keep going on this. And I have to tell you, if you think, oh my gosh, but that's another boring shawl. No, it's not at all. No comparison to that fluffy thing where it's just stuck in it because this is just a very, engaging and lovely stitch pattern yeah and the pattern is free i am using four millimeter needles i think she suggests 4.5s but i did that was too loose for me that's what i remember yes that is that, that was one of my travel pro projects, another travel projects, project. And the other one was the Edgar Slipover. And this is knitted with the sample with really heavy yarn and a gauge of 14 stitches by 24 rows um, on 10 by 10 centimeters. And I did not 
one to go that heavy with my yarn so I could get that gauge. So I modified as we do. <laughs> talked about that at length last time but um i mean really the the it was a bit of a challenge and the yarn i used give me a second I'm gonna rearrange myself here where oh where did i oh here it is <laughs> just wondering where I put the leftover skein. I used three skeins of this Zia Wool's Duke, which is a worsted weight yarn, and it's the sibling to Zia Wool's Sugar Loaf, the light fingering with about 400, 540 yards of superwash merino 100%. And this one, like I said, is the worst weight. And I did a custom dye because I wanted something blue. And yes, it is done. Done-ish. Almost. Yeah. I just really, really like the way it turned out. But I got to say now that I got to say the way it turned out now because I had some struggles which were homemade. Long story short, I, as soon as I washed this and I had not washed my gauge, of course I made a generous gauge swatch because I really, I had to modify the original pattern I think, what kind of needles did she use? Mine are, I use 4.5 millimeter needles and she uses, let's see, six millimeter needles. Yes, no wonder. Yeah, I didn't get to that gauge, not near as. So, and as soon as I washed this, my sleeve opening grew like you would not believe. So I had to do surgery and I actually went in here. I took out a row um, in the front and in the back and I reconnected this with the shoulders by a three needle bind off. It sounds so easy when I say it now, but I think what really made this hard in doing it was that um, when it's just knit, knit stitches, you can easily take out a row. But I'm telling you with the twisted stitches, that was not that easy. So it was fiddly and demanding but it worked out so nicely and I brought you the, the surgical remains. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And um, in case you wonder what you do for the, um, the way this is constructed is you start off with the back and then you pick up stitches and go down the front and um, until you connect under the sleeves. Yeah. And I probably I should have washed it once I was here. That would have been helpful, but I didn't. So, but this thing fits perfectly and you will see it on me another time. Yes. The length is also really nice. The back is a little bit longer than the front with a little slit. And um, I there's increases here in that um, twisted stitch section, but I um, did not do as many increases because I had a hard time figuring out um, how many increases I should make to mimic what she um, had in her pattern. And I just couldn't figure it out because there is no schematic, unfortunately, 
in the pattern. And it's called, like I said, Edgar Slipover, and she holds it. She holds her yarns with a mohair, and I think that's why it's easy to get to that gauge with the larger needles because you always want to allow your fuzzy yarn to bloom into every stitch. So this is the Edgar to be ends to be woven in and like I said three skeins so yeah each one of these skeins has four ounces. Edgar slip over by Colibri. I think she's German, but the pattern is published in English. Maybe also in German. I'm not sure. What is next? What else did I take on the trip? I took this. Oh, I took not this, not this, not that. I think I got that. Were those all the projects I took on the trip? I guess they were. Now, everything else, buckle up, because there's going to be a lot. I What happened was that um, my friends sent me some yarn that they had purchased for me in Estonia. And so I was thinking, well, I didn't really have an idea on what to make right away, but then... Um, but then I, I saw my friend Karen working on her sweater, on a new sweater. She's already done with hers, of course, by now, which was like two weeks ago or so. But um, when, she sh when I saw hers, I thought, I want to make that sweater. And so, and then I went stash diving for what I'm going to show you in a second but this led to a lot of other things because then I had ideas and I was <sighs> buying patterns left and right and just having a lot of fun with my stash and with my yarns and I'm never gonna get any of these done no, I shouldn't say that, but I feel like sometimes it feels like it, you know, when you got so many things going and you're like, oh my gosh, am I ever going to finish any of this? Because it doesn't grow a lot. So this is the yarn that my friends got for me in Estonia. Two, two balls of yarn. Giant. And the lady told them that this is enough for a sweater, but... I don't know, but whatever. Then the sweater that I am making and this whole deliciousness lives in a bag that my friend Doris made for me. And yes, by now I have so many projects that I need to make the tag. I made tags for my projects to put on the bag so I don't forget what's in them. And when I look for something, I don't need to open every single bag. So, but you want to know what is this Biak? Biak is a raglan and in the original version with also, which also my friend is making, it's black and white or made, she's done. <laughs> And mine is going to be the BAM. Wait, which way do I show you this? Oh, can you not see this? I have visions of this. So I thought, yes, lime green. This has to be with, done with lime green. And of course, this is thicker than my, this is Zia Wool's uh, velvet that I dyed up. And velvet is a lace yarn. So 50 grams have 330 roughly yards. So I knew I would have to hold this with a fingering yarn. And at first I wanted to dye it up and then I thought, no way, I will have to, I will go 
give my stash some love and appreciation, shop my own stash. And indeed, I found two of this, which is Heritage Sock Yarn by Cascade. And I got, like I said, two of these fingering weight. And I got going with the sweater and I'm really loving the fabric this creates. I had to fudge a little bit with the needle size initially, I think, I, because I like, I, I, I don't want my fabric to be too loose, but this one, I mean, I told you just a minute ago that a fuzzy yarn needs to have room to bloom. And that's what happened with this one also. So I, I am knitting this with, where are my glasses? I think, what are they? 4.5 or even five millimeter needles. I think they could be fives. Yes. They sure are. Yeah, five millimeters. And of course the ribbing, I started uh, with a size smaller. But what you need to know, if you fall in love with this as hard as I am, be aware that the neckline, and I saw that on my friend's sweater, that the neckline is really tiny. I'm the kind of person who's like, <gasps> Give me, let me breathe. I need the neck to be a little bit bigger. But then again, also, I don't live in a place where it's super cold. So, um, so I increase. It took me a bunch of tries to really get to the to the needle size and a stitch count, where I thought, okay, this is going to be a nice um, size for the neck. And you may say this looks. Uh, still small and I but I think once you put it on and you have the weight of the sweater on it it's going to be all right I um what else did I mean to tell you oh yes I changed the starting stitch count by adding stitches in increments of Eight, because per round where you work the raglan increases so usually that's every other round um, you increase by eight stitches and that's what I um, so I, I, I think I did 16 more and then another eight more and then another eight more so I restarted a couple of times but I think now I'm gonna be happy with it and there's one thing that I also changed. The designer has you not ever work any of the raglan increases on the wrong side of the fabric as you could do when you, um, when you work short rows and you shape a, to shape a higher back. Mm so she breaks so she does it all only on the right side then she says break the yarn and restart and reconnect i didn't do any of that so i did um my i put the beginning of the row right away where she says it should be on the back here on this raglan seam and um, then I worked some of the raglan increases on the wrong side of the fabric. And if you've done raglans, you'll know what I'm talking about. So that's my Bjork sweater to be eventually at some point. Things grow slowly, but they do always get done and I don't expect to fall out of love with this because my friends gifted me that other yarn and I was so thrilled about that. They're the dads of my goddaughter, by the way. If you have, I'm sure you've heard me talking about the, well, when I made things for the, um, for the little girl just recently I had. 
So this was part one of my finding something in the stash, finding treasures in the stash. And then I found this, which is a yarn that I won in a giveaway, but then I over dyed it. So it's not, I'm not even going to tell you what it was before. Oh, too much fluff flying around here. I sneezed. So this was the the yarn that I over dyed some kind of a turquoise ish and then I saw it next to this and I thought oh my god this is so nice together I need to figure out something to make with it I think this one I just wanted to put away because I had used it in the aster shawl so this one came out with the heritage sock yarn that lime green stuff and then I also pulled out this because both of these I purchased not too long ago at Yarning, our new yarn store here in Albuquerque. And I thought if this one, because it's not a full skein, if it's not enough, then I will just transition into this. And that should be fun too, because the shawl started with this and then it would end with that and that'll work let's do this show you the yarn again and this is Kelborn woolen's perennial and what are you making doug I am making the Zaria, Zaria shawl by Amber O'Brien. And I've had this in my queue for a while. I'm just really intrigued with this shape. And this is where I am. I am using four millimeter needles and sorry, this is kind of like flipping together, but it's so pretty. Love it. Just got to keep going. I think not too much further until I have reached the maximum depth where it has that, that it forms a tip. Excuse me for one second. I'm going to have to open this shade so we get more light. So, Zaria shawl. Is this better? I think so, right? And then I stumbled upon like all kinds of hand dyed leftovers that I, or minis, or who knows what. I have purchased in the past some um, skeins of hand dyed yarns really just mainly to um, do mini skein swaps. And all of a sudden I had this idea, wait, I'm going to make this tidings to you. And I've had this in my queue for quite some time. And I did want to, I, I, I and I really got um, my, 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 how should I say, my passion for this was reignited when I saw it. Someone in person, someone had it at the knitting retreat at Ghost Ranch in October. So I thought, hey, this is the time. I'm, I'm having all these leftover yarns and I should do it with this yarn. So I had, I'm going to show you the box. I put them all in the box here together to see how it how I can to see what works and how I can combine. I think originally the pattern was um, published by 
in connection with a kit from Jimmy Beans for Christmas. But I didn't have that and I don't think I need that. And so I got going. As you can see, I have already blocked this. Which way should I show you? Oh, maybe this way. Yeah. And this has not been the most, this has been, I don't even know how to say that. This was a little bit crazy because I ripped out a couple of times in this section because this where it's the green was knitted in a textured, textured words sometimes come out not too easily so but I didn't like that I didn't like the texture so I had another idea on how to continue with slip stitches kind of like like flip the colors um, and then I thought no this also pulls it together a lot you know draws it together and I didn't like that either and it looked so skinny anyways and so I thought, well, because I have a lot of variegated yarns, I'm just going to do it with this, um, with this section in stockinette. And there's a slip stitch pattern here where it transitions into the next color and here again. And so I thought even that I might shorten that slip stitch section next time. And yeah. What is my next color? I think I have this one right now. Yeah. And I really, I was worried about this being too narrow. That's why I, I completely submerged it. I don't want to say I washed it because I didn't, but then I, I blocked it and I aggressively blocked it as you may see with those tippy sides and even though I didn't like that but now my width was even wider than the pa pattern states yeah we'll see it's funny because I, I thought oh I I don't know for some reason I lost my love for this but now my love for it came back so I think I'm going to continue as soon as I pulled it out of the box, I thought, oh, this is actually really nice. Yes. And I have plenty of yarn, so hopefully it's going to keep going. That's the tidings to you. And like I said, find all the information like needle size and stuff on Ravelry. This one, I think I'm using 3.5 millimeter needles. What is next? I got this, I got that, I got that, I got the Zaria. Oh, yes. Man, I'm telling you, sometimes then the weirdest things happen. Like when you dig in your stash or when you open a closet and you clean up a little bit. Closet story, here it comes. Two things I found in there. One is an abandoned sock project and the other one a wannabe lace shawl. <laughs> yes, I know. Long time closet. Dormant, should I say, probably. And I apologize, I didn't bring any sock blockers, but... This is something that this vanilla sock knitter designed a few years ago. Oh my gosh. Isn't it glorious? I love this so much. But not enough to knit the second sock. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. The stitch pattern is from a German book called Omas Geheimnisse, and it's called Große Silberschlange, which translates as large 
silver snake. Silver, where that comes from, I have no idea. The yarn is my yarn, Ziawo Sandia, which is discontinued because the, my um, wholesaler doesn't carry it anymore, unfortunately, because it's really a great merino um, sock yarn. I mean, merino nylon blend. And this colorway is just it's it's vintage like seriously vintage probably seven years ago i haven't dyed this in many years and it would probably look differently if i did now because because the dye stocks change dyes change everything changes so i was thinking why did i never finish that second sock i sure should at least and so I weighed them. This second sock would take more yarn than I have here. So what I think what happened was that I thought, oh, I want to, I, I did these mini skein swaps and I thought, okay, I probably took twice a mini skein amount. But that would have been 10 grams or whatever. Well, definitely, there's a lot missing, not enough to make a second sock. And so, but now I'm thinking, I should just do it and see how far I get. And then I could rip out the toe to finish this the second sock to the toe section. And then I can always take something that's similar for a contrasting toe it won't be perfect but better than having just one sock in the closet at some point i thought i was gonna write up these the sock pattern but who am i kidding this is not gonna happen i'm a vanilla sock person i don't publish this <laughs> it would be yeah no doesn't make any sense Oh, I have one more thing that I forgot. Oh, goodness. Let me get that upside. Don't forget again. What happened a long, 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 long time ago was that I went to the yarn store at Knob Hill and I saw this shawl hanging there and I thought, I got to have this shawl. I wanted in lime green. So I dyed up Zia Wool's Spirit Lace Yarn in this glorious color. Oh my gosh, look at it. Oh, I love it. So, and I, but I never started the shawl. It's, I, the pattern photos sorry people not not really very informative and there is no better ones in on Ravelry only in the projects maybe Rafa Gachon and I have this is something that I like to do I enlarge the chart so I can work a little bit easier and maybe even without my reading glasses on this and i started and i have these wonderful beginnings <gasps> yay it's a barbie shawl <gasps> yes i love it i had started this with a uh, larger needle size as they require as they ask for but i did not like that at all so now i am using three millimeter yarn uh, needles and um if i get a problem later i will figure it out maybe to extend the lace pattern if it's too small or something yeah at least i have started and it's going, so it's gonna get done, finally, yes. And 
And the next thing that has consumed quite a bit of time uh, lives in this bag. And the yarn I found, you may recall that I recently did this dye studio stash cleanup um, where I found this. I had thought about adding this to the Ziawul shop, but it is, it's really, it would have to be. I mean, it's expensive in itself, and I thought, oh, how exciting is that going to be like? Because I could only dye solids because it's a 49% silk, and you don't want this to be... You know, it, it, it needs heat to set, and I think if I did speckle, that's more time consuming, whatever, lots of reasons. I decided against carrying it, but I had these four skeins that I had reserved for myself because they're orange and because I love orange. And I'm going to say hi to my friend, um, Andrea in, in Germany, who also loves orange. Andre I may even have sent her a sample of this yarn because I thought she would get the kick out of the color. Yeah. And so this is where I am right now. I really, I flew through the yoke. And if you like it and you think about making this, you have to um, absolutely go to my project notes because there's a mistake in the chart. I did not find anything on anybody's notes, maybe I overlooked it, where someone, um, you know, said something about that. But um, the, the sweater is a free pattern, the cardigan pattern, it's called the Cardi Flower. And there's definitely a, a, a mistake in the chart. And I know that because for one, it felt like, oh, that it should be this and that to, you know, come, there's a decrease. So there's got to be a yarn over. And um, so I, and I just ended up just doing it then the way I felt because I didn't want to have down here in the yoke a decrease of stitches. And, um, but then I, my stitch count was correct when I was done with the yoke. Yeah, so I did it right. And where I am right now is kind of like, I think I am only gonna do here. Or can you see that? Here's the buttonholes. And so I think I'm going to go to the next buttonhole and then I'm going to end it, kind of making it a little bit shortish, cropped-ish. Not really cropped. I don't know where cropped. But um, yeah, this I am making with, what, I, what is this? Gosh, today I'm, the needle sizes are really... I think it's a 4.5, actually. And the yarn pretty much is a worsted weight. Yeah, I'm excited about this. I'm going to be getting that done quickly. And I don't really have a problem with knitting sleeves, so that won't be an issue either. I think you have seen almost everything and um no not true i have a finished object <sighs> my friend and i my friend ulrike and i we usually make something for each other's birthdays and um I, it's almost a tradition i think i've made her in the past years i've always or almost always made her some fingerless mitts and so that's what I wanted to do for her this year. And I made her 
a pair of Duke City mitts and I got the yarn from my singles yarns, singles sock yarn bin. Again, stash diving. These yarns I got from my mother. Um, leftovers and I decided to do them with the colors reversed. Oh, sorry, the light is a little bit weird now. I hope you can see this okay. So I had this um, a reddish singles yarn and held it with a kind of pink purplish berry colored mohair and reversed it here you can see the green with the mohair and this was a slightly heavier mohair that i held double and i had just this itty bitty tiny rest leftover ball you cannot even call it a ball because it was so small and so i held that double and I popped that in between. And I really like how that turned out and how it plays with the colors. Now I just gotta get some weaving in to do. The only thing is I'm not quite sure if I'm really, if I should send them to her. We haven't seen each other in a long time and I don't know, I don't know how big her hands are. I feel like her hands are slimmer than mine. And these are kind of like Lucy. And so I don't know if these would fit her. They're even slightly large for me. So I had also taken out these two yarns. This one, I don't know, that also comes from the um, single sock yarn bin. And I got the matching mohair. And so I may just um, change the stitch count and make uh, this pair and give her that. And I brought another pair of fingerless <laughs> mitts for you. And this one is actually the Duke City mitts. I didn't even say that, goodness gracious. I have used, I think, four millimeter needles and this is my own free pattern on Ravelry Duke City Mitts. These are called Across the Desert. Sorry about the weird shading here. Better? I published these a few years ago and they are, I used, um, yeah, they are made with hand spun yarn. That's why you get these funny, lovely stripes. But um, I I am thinking about republishing the pattern, maybe just coming up with a heavier version so it doesn't take you a hundred years to make a pair because this is 2.5 millimeter needles. And the pattern is just absolutely pretty. I love this stitch, stitch pattern. And I was actually thinking these need to have a matching hat. So as soon as I had that idea yesterday, I started. I found some yarn. I wanted fuzzy and I wanted to use a yarn that I don't always carry, but right now I have a large order for this yarn from the Taos yarn store and Mooncat Fibers. So this is uh, Zia Wool's Chama. A lovely, lovely eight ply cabled yarn. Can you see how nice the definition is? Or the, the stitch definition would be on this one, I should say. It's a lovely yarn. So because I'm dying all that yarn, Right now, I thought, oh, look, there's a little leftover ball. 
I can use that and I can use this, which is leftover velvet. So I'm holding these two together. And yet again, we have a case of using larger needles and have the yarn bloom into the stitch. And I have started this hat. It looks ginormous, but I was hoping that this is the largest size, a kid size. I don't know. I think some people would like this as a hat for an adult, you know, kind of like really stretch it. I don't like my hats that tight. Yeah, I'm excited about this. I want to continue. I'm probably going to continue tonight. <laughs> One of these projects. Oh my gosh. So did I say, did I tell you the needles? 4.5 for the ribbing. Five millimeter needles now. Yeah. I hope you will like this as much as I do. I'm excited about this and I'm excited about the matchy matchy with the across the desert mitts. And then I just brought um, two more, two more ideas, mind whips for you, which are almost, almost ready to cast on. One of them is this cardigan. It's called Flown. Yeah, I just bought this. And when I was digging in the stash, I picked out some vintage stash yarn. I will show you in a second. And the other one is a newer stash edition. The yarn, I mean, the cardigan is called the Mira Soul. Yeah. And what are the yarns? The flam cardigan. I mean, you know how it goes. I had three skeins of this loveliness, which I bought in Las Cruces at the store. Who knows how many years ago? Because I think she closed her store many years ago. One of the skeins is a little bit darker. Maybe you can see that. So I'll have I'll have to pay attention to that and maybe put that on the at the end of the sleeves and the body, like divide it up or so. And I have dyed up this to match, which it that's perfectly I'm looking forward to that but I want to I need a few projects off my needles so I can really concentrate on this because it's brioche and I I'm gonna have to stick with it once I start at least for a while you know and the Mira soul cardigan you're gonna say oh my gosh this yarn is perfect for that I bought this in October at the Wool Festival in Taos. One dyer, another dyer. No tea and yarning apart. Yeah, I think that's going to be a beautiful gradient. I think in the pattern when you knit, you also kind of like work it so the colors blend into each other. So I think this will be fabulous. You know, I tell you this, I would love to cast all of them on right away. I don't even know why I haven't. Maybe because I got my sweater reactivated with, briefly, <laughs> that I showed you another time. So I should, Life is too short for shoulds, right? So we will see what happens. So 
the um um <laughs> sorry i was so distracted just because i thought my ipad was my ipad pad screen was scratched doesn't matter never mind me so if you would like to see some impressions from the knitting retreat and from Utah's beautiful, beautiful um, nature and national parks and um, then stick around. I'm going to add on some photos at the end. I hope you this finds you well and I'm thanking you for being here with me again and I will see you hopefully soon and hold on. Hopefully if you are local you're going to come and stop by and see me at the Albuquerque Fiber Arts Fiesta on April 12 and 13. Google it. Albuquerque Fiber Arts Fiesta. It's going to be fun. Lots of local guilds. Lots of fun thing to things to shop for, like um, grow that stash kind of things and um, fabrics and whatnot. It's going to be fun. Hope to see you there if you are local. Bye. Mm -hmm.